All right. We'll see if this thing can uh, can do the job. I'm I'm just beta testing my uh, phone here as a recorder because uh, at any given time I may need to do a a pod. At any given time, I may need to be, do a pod sort of on the, you know, without without the use of a computer. So I've programmed this to be able to, um, this phone, this iPhone, to be able to upload to, uh, to the site and log it in to where all I would have to do is show up there. So it automatically would finish and then it would, it, it's not the same quality as being in the studio or having the uh, the H2 mic that I have carried around, but that's even that H2 mic requires that there's a uh, uh, processing. Whereas this, there's no processing. We just go. The message can come in, go straight there, and then on the phone, I can go to the uh, to the site, log in, and get it to play. Which sometimes its immediacy is more important, obviously. And these are extreme times, obviously. So here we are, first, first, uh, first awakening. I've had things to say for a few days, and have held back. And uh, <laughs> it's, um, you know, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord open your ears, your hearts, your minds to His Word, not to the distractions of the world, and may this transmission bless us all, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, and as you see, it gets very dark, such as the way it's been, uh, yeah, I must have my coffee to uh, awaken, because well, the Lord told me to get up at this hour, and you know, it's like, uh, what am I going to do? Say no? No, I think I'll just... I mean, what, what, are, what are any of us doing here on the planet on our own? Right? Any of us. So we strive here for accuracy. I'm, you know, I've kind of done this casual production thing because I knew at some point it would be on the run. In other words... You know, well, not not yet on the run from from the the police state, but I mean on the run, meaning like we have to be able to have the word strike when it hits. And uh, I really hate doing being at odds with anyone, really. You know, and I I, I you know because. It just seems so dark now that it would be perfectly logical if we were to say that uh, get ready for the old El Rapturo next week because it just can't really get any darker and this is the worst we've ever seen it so that must be it and, uh, and okay well there you go that must be it and so Away we go. Come fly with me. <laughs> yeah, and away we go off to the uh, New Jerusalem, but it, you know, off to the kingdom, off to the, you know, off to the next formation. And there are people, and I've heard people recently, and the Lord alerted me to it. I wasn't looking, but. Um, I think the the rapture people with me, they try to hide from me and act like they're not really into it. You know what I mean? They kind of hide it, like, similar to the way the Satanists hide their state. They kind of, like, they don't mention that that's what they're really into, but that's kind of a deep, dark secret. It's like if you're around the rapture people, that's another kind of a deep, dark secret. They don't lay it on you because they they know that there there would be resistance to it. And they also know that logically they can't make an argument that you could take all the points that are used and all the scriptures used to make their argument and use it to make the opposite point of view. 
as I've done many times. And it's kind of like, no, that scripture means this. No, I'm sorry, but that means this. And, and uh, no, that's the return of Jesus, not the rapture. What else? Anything else? And then, you know, they get hung up on certain scriptures about, um, you know, Paul's revelation of the man of perdition, Daniel's revelation of the, of the fierce king of the end before the, the, the forever kingdom, the book of Revelation, Revelation 18, the punishment of um, uh, the world and Babylon, and of course the killing of all the people that were on Satan's side who were... Uh, who kept their system going from thousands of years, even before it was called Babylon, uh, and it was based on bloodletting. It was based on the the letting of uh, of innocent blood. Um, so you've got, you know, you've got, uh, you've definitely, um, I mean, and and of course, from the time immemorial, this has been the rise and fall of civilizations for thousands of years. And thousands and, and, and millions if you take ancient civilizations before this one. That um, they would rise up. There would be, they would go, you, you know, they would, they would um, so they would have a stable foundation of food, of, of, of something, of a way to sustain and, and establish themselves. Um, they would run into the fallen angels who promised them advanced technology and no starvation and great, uh, you know, and, and even in some cases, you know, nuclear weapons and space travel and time travel was, was uh, is also offered, um, which eventuates into war. And obviously, as we can see from history, it eventuates into, yes, the advanced civilization, but where are they now? Well, they collapsed because they went the way of, of Satan. You know, they then built the pyramids worldwide and the rituals were sacrificial rituals and the pyramids were built to hold men's souls. I don't know how they do that, but it's some kind of a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a almost like an enslavement device, although it, 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 it seems to be some sort of a projector. In other words, that, that uh, it, it, you could project yourself to Orion or Sirius or, you know, to the stars or whatever, or project your spirit or become, or an apotheosis machine where the, 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 uh, the, the participant would um, become a divine being like a pharaoh would be, or a king would become a divine king or a divine pharaoh that would then be one of the gods through the apotheosis, through the process of technology used on that machine and then some energy force either from within it or that would hit it or work with it to make that apotheosis happen or whatever. And then we know about the sacrificial rituals for blood sacrifice, which was also similar in the sense of blood letting equaled contacting the gods. And there are various ones, as we know, various fallen angels that have different functions. Um, but the requirement was always, you know, killing innocent people, murdering them, actually. Um, in exchange for favor and then when the favor didn't come in the case of the Maya well they just started you know cutting the hearts and heads off of uh, countless you know thousands and hundreds in a day uh, you know just to, to, to turn things around and things didn't turn around the civilization collapsed and they were scattered more sacrifice did not equal stopping the fall of civilization but the fall of civilization did not mean the end of time in Rome, the same thing, they worshiped the same gods. The, uh, the gods of uh, the Greeks that got changed into Roman names were also the fallen angels, you know. So Greek mythology will show you, you know, in hybrids like Hercules. And, you know, you have different, you, you know, you can read Greek mythology today and, you know, with your knowledge of the Bible and, and the Nephilim and whatnot, you're able to see a lot more of what was really going on because a lot of these Mythology stories and children's stories are really very, you know, a way of putting forth something very sophisticated that people can't understand uh, together to, to anthropomorphize the gods, quote unquote, um, is a way that people can um, 
you know, deal with them. You know, kids can, you know, kids love the stories. They make movies out of the stories, you know, about these, uh, these superhuman beings. And this desire to be a god in the same way is the Illuminati, is the whole goal of civilization was George H.W. Bush's goal when he gave the speech of a thousand points of light after the Iraq war, uh, or sometime as it was closing, I was around in that time frame, uh, the first Iraq war, which if you look at it this way, that's interesting. The speech was given after the bloodletting of killing, I don't know how many people. And then there was this talk about the new world order. It was just almost like a Mayan priest. And when you start seeing uh, war and, and drone killing, for example, as the head of the temple, in this case, King Barak, doing his sacrifices using the drone, it's, and then looking for the same result in order to have favor from the gods, to be indwelt by Lucifer, to be the one they've been waiting for, and to have the whole world obey, and those who don't obey in, 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 in satanic parlance are eliminated. Those who do are enslaved and told what they can and cannot do, and they're, they're made poorer and poorer, until finally they are just treated as dirt and uh, an impediment, some, you know, as cannon fodder by the monarch. And then eventually the civilization collapses again. But it always kind of goes to a monarchy. In this case, uh, in the case of Barack Obama, what they want is the, the, the divine king, the God king on earth. And they've done everything to do that. They also want Lincoln because they want, you know, they, they, uh, the, the left wants to murder um, the right. They want to see blood in the streets. They want to see Obama go get them, say, in the form of guns, trod them down and, uh, and butcher them with uh, military machinery so they can sit in their living rooms and cheer. Uh, and I ask you, well, what is that? You know, did you always know your neighbors were like that? They were murderous, that, that they had murderous intent? Well, that's basically a little bit of, uh, of you know, I'm just talking about perhaps their fantasies, but they, they know that they can't have their world to get away with it without you, unless you're gone. And if you're going to be killed anyway, then they're going to cheer it on and they're going to keep voting for their dictator because that's what they want. They've always hated freedom and they've always hated you because you love freedom. You'll stand up for freedom. You'll fight for freedom. You, you would uh, fight against King George in, in, in the American Revolution, you would uh, give your life to, to make your family free, give me liberty, give, you know, those values, if you hold those, that you're the enemy, and now you can see the whole news, press, and everything vilifying that, because what are they? They are, and have always been, slaves. They were the slave owners of old, as well, uh, uh, that go, I mean, I'm talking about of old, meaning over the millennia. They um, have always wanted to bow down before their king and take their place in their hierarchy. Luciferianism being a hierarchy is they already have no freedom. Most of these people are, um, their DNA changes from, from their belief they belong to the devil, you know, which is about hierarchy, royalty, kings, queens, and mostly poor servants who get poorer as time goes on and occasionally try to revolt, but usually they're too feeble to fight against the king and his, and his forces. So it's the sad story of tyranny that we've had worldwide forever and ever. And Jesus was looked at as the one who liberates us from even the desire for things, you know, just to liberate us to another world, to another kingdom, to the, to the real uh, kingdom, to the real place of God, that God would not have just forsaken us. You know, they've tried to explain this with... Uh, you know, the church talking about original sin and how we all have to pay for Adam and Eve. And, I'm <clears throat> sorry, but their scenarios there uh, just aren't true in the way they portray all humanity. Because like I said, the last time, uh, there's a genetic um, profile that is, th that are, the, the people of Satan, if you will. And I don't know how long these souls have been around or, you know, what kind of uh, ownership arrangements there are, but he owns those souls. And he owns those beings, you know, feeling like he had created them from, you know, even though it was really corruption, he calls it creation. 
And he feels like he wants to have that with everyone. But he also knows, that is Satan, that God's people are also among, you know, that the, for them, the wheat and the tares, the tares would be us and the wheat would be them. So for them, the wheat and the tares have grown together from the beginning as well. And they've never been able to, as much as they've tried, you know, and they've tried throughout the ages to get rid of that Elijah spirit, that spirit of God, the people that belong to him, because there's a, there's a certain genetic profile. They, they could no more be a Satanist than, um, and they, they wouldn't even have a clue how to get along in, a, in, the, in, the, in the satanic hierarchy. And they would not know how to play the game, even if you taught them on a daily basis, this is the game and here's how you play it. And here's how you move up. And it's just basically, you know, kind of like a slave prostitution thing. And you work your way up, you know, you get to the next powerful person and you get to the next one. And then eventually you get to, you know, and they don't, they can't understand it. They, they just, they, they, they keep going back to what about just hard work? And it's like, well, you know, you're going to be a loser. You're going to work hard and be punished for it. 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 Work hard and never get enough, never you know, never be appreciated for who you are. And, you know, they'll come along every once in a while with a little tisk tisk reminder of how good the life could be if you would only just wake up and uh, grow up and accept that this is the way of the world and that, you know, you're going to have to play the game like everybody else if you want to get ahead uh, or even even. <laughs> and a lamb of God, um, they know this though, that there there is... You can talk to them till you're blue in the face and it still won't make sense. They still will claim that they don't really see it your way, that they can live their way. And, you know, they don't really want to be a slave. And they, they you know, and they, you can say, but this is freedom. This is come on and take a free ride, Edgar Winter Group, you know, 1970 or whatever. It's like, no, I'm sorry. Um, it ain't no free ride. Well, no, this is the Rocky Mountain way. It's really cool. No, there ain't no freedom in the Rocky Mountain way. That's just slavery. Uh, Joe Walsh knows full well what he was talking about and full well uh, what his whole trip is. And, you know, I guess owes his success in some way to playing the game, to being on his Rocky Mountain way, whatever. I mean, that's... Uh, he says it's better than the way he had before, and the way he had before was leading nowhere. So many people in the entertainment business, you know, have changed and become very mean-spirited because, you know, they go in and, you know, once you've played this game for a while, you actually hybridize. You know, you, there are certain things that get activated. You, you know, you wouldn't even be there in the first place unless that was your master and you heard his voice and then you understood how to get off that dusty road you know, walking alone on that dusty road. You know, where <laughs> you learn to play the game or you learn to fly or whatever kind of metaphor they want to use for it, um, you know, will take you to a, a good place of cooperation, collectivism, and boosting up the, those who are talented in the limelight where they deserve. So the entire, you know, uh, and they feel that the good chords and the Awesome note progressions and scales. It almost seems like scales, lizard scales, but no, scales, you know, uh, progressions of notes that are pleasant together and, and have meaning, that they come from the devil. And that um, if someone wants to really be a hot guitar player or, or piano player or drummer or something, you know, the real inspiration is going to come, you know, with the muses after they uh, bow down because those spirits will be there to help them. And many, many of the songwriters who've written real big hit songs said, well, it just came to me, you know. And of course, the devil knew that that would be a hit and he chose that person to have it. And yes, he can do those things. And they want those things. They want to bow down to Satan. It's almost a, it's a Jack Black cliche, right, of uh, bowing down to the devil so that you can, not just so you can be famous, so, but you, so like uh, Crossroads, right? So you can, all these cultural uh, movies and, and lyrics and different things that show you uh, that they're really serious about this. Crossroads is a very real thing. I think that was directed by Walter Hill. Yeah, he lived, he lived across the street from my mother in uh, 
he's directed another movie. He's an old guy. I used to watch him walking, you know, hobbling along. This kind of old man, uh, the famous Walter Hill. But, uh, you know, the lawn was manicured and, you know, he had a nice, you know, he always had the same Mercedes and <clears throat> whatnot and lived in this, what most people would call a mansion, I suppose. And, um, you know, kind of kept at. I mean, life slowed down. He didn't direct very much, but he did, you know, with manage to direct something here in the last year. But anyway, um, I do believe that I, I'm, if I'm not, I could be mistaken. The crossroads with with Ralph Macchio. Remember that? And was that Steve Vai on uh, who played the the Devil's guitarist? And they had a duel. Very interesting movie. And I, I believe it was Walter Hill, but I may be maybe mistaken. And, 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 and who cares? Why should I pay so much attention to who the players are in, in, uh, in the culture? Crossroads was just basically kind of a, a you know, um, it should be called Guitar Center's, you know, 101. Uh, along with flashing the devil horns, you have to do a little more than that, you know. And so here's more, a little bit what it's about. And then... Um, you know, when you're done reading that, uh, yes, please service me. <laughs> and then you really get an idea about what it's all about, right? Or, you know, Axl Rose's uh, Welcome to the Jungle. Or any, any other thing that says nobody's, n none of you pretty girls are going to get in the limelight unless you bow down, basically. Unless you, you know, it's, but it's not just the gritty street thing. It is the devil. It has to be him. It can't be some other way. It can't be just you prostitute yourself and work your way up and there is no God or devil. There can't, there never has been that. There has been the, the secular denial on purpose as a mind control meme introduced into the culture so that people think, well, I, you know, uh, no, I don't believe in God or the devil or any of that stuff. I just, you know, worked really hard and made, you know, and, or I, you know, I played the game and, uh, you know, there was no God, no devil involved. And they'll say that and they'll deny because they must lie about it. Because the devil must not be seen as something real. Which is why Jack Black mocked it in some rock and roll movie he had. Um, you know, they kept, kept trying to get in good with Satan. I said, well, I, if I talked to Jack Black, I would have said, well, then why don't you just go ahead and like start killing something and see if that helps you get in good with Satan so you could be a rock star. And, you know, unfortunately, um, that uh, bloodletting has gone on in that regard. In the favor, sometimes known and sometimes un unbeknownst to the, uh, to the recipient. Here's this really talented, we, in our secret society here, we'll do this sacrifice for their benefit and then watch them go up the ladder. And, you know, it does work if it has the you know, devil's approval. It's just the same way as you, know, you have to have God's approval to, to, to pray. And um, you know, prayer is still stronger than their bloodletting. And they know that. And so the thing they want to do is put doubt in your mind so that you're not really a praying person, so that you're distracted, so that strongholds of sin have you held down, uh, such as you know, drinking too much or smoking weed or you know, doing, you know, doing pornography or any kind of... The, sins you know or lying or whatever it is so that you you will not pray because you don't consider yourself worthy of prayer and the thing they're worried that you will do if you're one of God's is that you'll pray and that's the thing they fear the most because those prayers are more that can undo all their bloodletting including um war type bloodletting you know where there's a war a conflict for example the Benghazi was as much a um, intentional sacrifice on the part of the Obama administration as it was uh, a strategic sacrifice in that they, uh, you know, there was all kinds of, um, uh, you know, evidence about, you know, the gun running and stuff to the, the Syrian rebels, which is Al-Qaeda, and, and the government's involvement with Al-Qaeda, that Al-Qaeda is just simply a wing of the American government, and just used as a straw man to say, oh, there's Al-Qaeda, let's go. The sacrifice in Africa, where they're all dead, and, that, and that's interesting. There are no survivors, um, and you know we hear about it, and then we hear, "Oh, Al Qaeda is there," and uh, sure enough, um, it, to me, it was another. Or the drone strikes, where we have, and I don't know, the number I heard yesterday was about 170 children Obama has killed personally 
by personally approving uh, strikes that he knew would kill the children. And he did it anyway. And uh, that had been a policy that if, if one of our soldiers had gone into a village and killed 160 children, they would be put up on trial for murder. But it won't happen with him. He's the pharaoh. He can, if he wants to kill children, it's the left applauds because they're, they're, a, very, they're a bunch of violent liars. And I've never met one that didn't lie to me personally. And, um, you know, that's also part of the game is getting involved in that culture. You have to, you know, if you want to play the game in Hollywood, you have to change yourself to a leftist. And, you know, that would mean, you know, they have a bloodlust. They want a dictator. They hate freedom. It's, it's amazing. They want, a, they want a hierarchy where they're on top and you're on the bottom. And, uh, you know, I, I told you about, um, not Biden, but I told you about, they're all the same to me, uh, Boehner, and how he had to humiliate himself in front of the king and how he had decided to start serving the king. And he bowed down before the king. And then there was some video uh, recently of Michelle laughing at him what a, <laughs> and dismissing him like a fool and him playing the fool literally on television. And, and I said, this is the temple. This is the, the, the king. This is the court of the king and the ritual that he has to humiliate himself and take her crap. And he's done it before to be a, to be a congressman. He had to do it. So he's done it before, but now he's doing it again, what he knows to do. And he's being publicly mocked and humiliated to the point where I don't think any of these Republicans really even want to be a Republican. This is all going on. I mean, if you look at the real story of what's happening, then you see the actual workings of the spirit in uh, the, all these realms. But anyway, I told you he would keep doing that. And even to the point where he is being mocked uh, and dismissed by Michelle. And um, it's, uh, they've all you know, recognized that, you know, he was the chosen king and they're bowing down. And here's the problem with that. And this is where, why it became an important issue to get on the horn today here. The problem with that is that um, to be the one that they've been waiting for and to be the one that you would call the man of perdition and the Antichrist and all that, he would have to be possessed by Satan at some point. Um, he would, uh, and he would have to have uh, supernatural powers that, that, I mean, they already attribute to him like comic book powers and they have him as a superhero and he can do anything and he's going to smash the Republicans, which he's done, and he's going to now smash the states and have the military go in and confiscate the guns and he's going to just rule and be the dictator of the world. It looks like he's on a roll and, and as I said before, no one would stop him. And other things I had predicted, you know, have happened. You know, woe to the person that makes these statements and predictions in the name of the Lord, and then they don't come to pass. But I guess that doesn't stop them. Here we have made uh, quite a few. Like, for example, you know, everything you're seeing now was basically predicted in 2008, pretty much. And that, you know, the, the rise of this power, we've seen it. Um, but then Hawaii was a bust on the solstice. And then afterwards, there was the Sandy Hook ritual, which was also a bust. And so then there was the hostages in Northern Africa, and that's a bust as well. You have the almost comical bowing down of Boehner and company. That would indicate to you, for people that know what they're looking at, that they're looking at that, you know, they've been conquered and they're bowing down before their new king and they're not going to serve the people. Boehner is your traitor. He will never serve you. He, he is shown what kind of character he has. Go along to get along, God. That's right. He doesn't mind public humiliation. He doesn't care because he knows it's temporary and that eventually the president will throw him a, a crumb and he'll be able to take care of his family. And that's all he's looking at. That's all he's looking at. That's all he's looking at. And we've seen this in Hollywood We've seen this in corporate industry, this bowing down. We see this pecking order in Freemasonry. We see it in secret societies, and they take their place because this thing of the devil and the hierarchy is bigger than politics. And they don't want to be um, suicided at 3 a.m. They don't want to be put on some list. They don't want to be blackballed. They don't want to be able to not be able to uh, survive in business. They don't care if they have to lie a little bit or bow down to some man somewhere in order to have a life or be humiliated by his wife or whatever publicly 
uh, at the uh, inauguration ball, um, you know, just as a kind of, uh, or laughed at openly, guffaws publicly as they did to him. They don't want to be booed like Paul Ryan was. And so they will not represent you. They're going to come for your property in the way of higher tax rates to the point of um, where, you know, which is the taxes are there as a, you know, by, this is kind of a Rush Limbaugh theory, but the reason taxes are there is a wealth prevention tool uh, by the ruling class so that they don't get competition from people that, and families that are able to compound wealth over generations. So that's why they have the death tax and they have the progressive tax in order to punish. And what they want to do is raise it to about 75 to 90 percent above a certain amount of money so that nobody really becomes a multimillionaire or billionaire. They, they cut that off at the pass. And the people that are billionaires today, they have learned to play the game to keep their wealth. That is, uh, that's why you see Warren Buffett humiliating himself out there saying, oh, I really want higher taxes. Well, you know, he doesn't, but he's doing that in order to get a, a pass from the ruling class elite. And, you know, the fix is in, the wealth confiscation is on, the people that are left on the, on the playing board will be left there to be the elites, but the ones that are going to be confiscated are the ones who are trying to get up, trying to, you know, run their business as well, trying to work for the American dream, and they want to make sure that no one actually achieves that. When, when they say middle class, what they mean is poverty. You know, in other words, uh, entitlement poverty is their idea of a middle class. So all of this is a lie. It's all predatory. It's all designed to destroy your wealth and destroy you and get you to bow down, accept poverty, and accept, you know, ultimately where they want to stick you. The other vision that, uh, there's a vision I had years ago about the punishment to America, and this is just the beginning of the punishment to America. You all think, haven't we been punished? No, you haven't even begun to be punished yet. Here's, here's what's happening. You're being replaced by the Chinese, and I said that, you know, all the, I see all, I had a vision of all these Americans, you know, dead, and then they were replaced by foreigners, you know, Chinese and others, um, in, especially up in the Northeast, in Chicago and these different cities. There were no, uh, it wasn't just along ethnic lines, there were no Americans. They, it was all, you know, Chinese and Chinese language and Chinese run. Because, and remember I told you, I told you this. You don't tend to look at the logic here. We're talking about debt. No one is worth what the debt, is, the public debt is. No group or individual in America is worth that. The Chinese own that debt, and they're giving orders to Obama, I want you to take their guns because they're not going to like what we're going to do to them, and then we're going to confiscate the lands. In other words, the, lands will, the public lands will be as collateral, and we're going to take over. And the people that will bow down to the Chinese may have a shot at being somebody, but basically landowners... Uh, and the other thing is the rise of the Obama uh, Obama Corps, which will be kids that will be issued weapons to because they will shoot their parents and they will shoot landowners and people like that that won't give in. And um, the, he wants that to be stronger than the U.S. military, as he stated over and over again. So we've seen these tactics, in, in, and that's what happened in China. They would just, uh, and the purge in Russia, the same thing. They use kids because kids will fire on Americans. And uh, they will be trained by people who will train them to fire on Americans, anyone that won't give in, and it will be an iron fist crush of any and all, and all individuality and everything, with the idea that um, and then the, the handing over of all the lands and all the property and all the development to the Chinese, all the mining and all the rich oil fields that are not allowed to be drilled because they've been saving those for the Chinese so they could come in and drill. And then, of course, Chinese would be working all the lands. I saw this vision from a ways off. It must have been a decade ago. I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but I did mention it quite a few times over the years. And that's what the Lord showed me. He didn't show me you being raptured. He showed me you being dead and them being living in your house and them taking over your factory and them having your land and them farming it, all being made possible by your politicians who don't serve you one day. They're too busy bowing down to the new king. They got the message, he's invincible. 
So basically that to them is supernatural. Therefore, there's enough proof that he is the, the one. So you're damn right they're going to allow themselves to be humiliated publicly as an initiation right into the club, which is all it is. It's all it is. It's like Hillary Clinton was there before the, uh, the Benghazi thing, and it was just basically the cover-up of the Benghazi thing. And they all participated in it, uh, like clockwork. Even some of the people you thought were conservative were just there kissing her ass. And uh, because, you know, they, they understand their place in the hierarchy. So it just shows people you thought may not have been corrupt are actually corrupt. Oh, well. Meaning that they're beholden to the Luciferian reality and not to the idea of the, the, the template of America. And underneath that, everyone has cheated and played the game to get their position so that they won't be broke. I mean, it's primarily for money, but they did, they did it. And now they become twice dead. The Lord's very serious about that. If you go over there and stay over there, that means you were meant to go there in the first place. And a lot of people you think are God-fearing Christian patriots really belong to the devil. They were just prodigal sons and daughters being on the wrong side, and now they've woken up, and uh, they're welcomed on their side wonderfully. If... if uh, And unfortunately, there's a, quite a few of those people who are still in this Christian media. And you guys playing the Christian media game, you've got to stop doing that. There is no future for you. There is no ratings that are going to go up and help you. Uh, ginning up conspiracies and fear-based stuff is, is that, you know, um, was titillating. I know we've all talked about those topics and, you know, like the aliens and the, you know, and what, what I'm talking about now is just basically fait accompli, is it not? Is it, it's basically news. It's, it's nothing, we're not conjecturing anything here today. We're not even ginning up fear. We're just, I'm just kind of deciphering a little bit about what you're looking at so you can see it as the Luciferic temple rituals rather than, you know, just this, you know, false template of reality that, in other words, so that you can go deep enough so you can see what everything means. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to understand. And they're never going to tell you or teach you this in college. So, but, but we're just looking at what is here rather than, you know, conjecturing the alien invasion or whatever. And, 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 and I'm not saying there won't be an alien invasion. I'm just saying that you know who you are. There's been a lot of... Uh, programs of the last decade or so, especially since 2000, uh, 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 you know, September 11th, since 2001. And there's been all these, um, you know, shows on television, Ancient Aliens and, uh, uh, you know, the, the monuments and the various shows about things are very interesting. And there's been coast to coast and then the, 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 you know, the way I can tell that a person's not really a brother or sister is that they, they wind up on coast to coast as an approved of guest. And it's like, okay, you can cross that one off the list and throw them away. God has. And they keep going, God, God, God. And it's like George and I will keep you know, going, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. But he put, put one of you on and see what he does. He'll never, get, he'll never do that. He'll never, see, because they're playing a game. It's all fake. It's all smoke and mirrors. And these are typically the same people that have been on there telling you about the, the world's going to end tomorrow over and over and over again. And um, they've been wrong over and over and over again, showing they are a false prophet, a false spirit that is unrepentant. And the Lord will, has already cut them off. They have no man of God. And they gave that up in order to be famous in the Christian media conspiracy circles that are uh, focused on the end times and titillating paranormal and coast-to-coast -coast shows. They sold out. You're not going to learn anything from them, ever. Everything you learn from them will be a disappointment. Oh, we're getting into the Rima now. Oh, God, Lord. Oh, okay. Okay. Ah! All right. Oh, I just got filled with, just, whoa, overwhelmed. There we go. Keep talking. Need another coffee. It's five ten. So there, uh, there's this company. You know, I mean, I can understand it from a logical point of view. Like people want to be successful, and they want this Christian media thing to work. So they, 
they need to get donations and they need to sell DVDs and books and things and you know they need to make that successful. They need to come up with something really unique so you'll go to them and not just figure it out on your own. And you know they'll keep you listen to each episode because they keep stringing you along through what's going to happen, what's going to happen. And we're all guilty of listening to those shows. I've, I've done that. And, you know, and most recently with Alex Jones w- regarding some of the, uh, the, since about, well, since the news media really failed, I mean, even, even the conservative media failed and, and the watchdogs failed and the Fox News, you know, you could get maybe a few percentage points of truth out of there, but no, well, no longer, so I started, you know, and then, and then, you know, Alex is his own, he's got his own problems and, and whatnot, but he paints this uh, sort of Darth Vader, you know, mural at Denver Airport. I'm not saying he's wrong, but I mean, it, he's still saying the same thing last, when I tuned into him last, it was a few years ago, and he was saying the exact same thing he's saying today, and then 10 years ago, he was saying the same thing he's saying today. Yep, it's really bad. Well, you know, here's the question that could be asked. How come then it doesn't just go to the Darth Vader police state, Nazi Germany, death camps thing right now? Or two years ago? Or four years ago? Or eight years ago? Or ten years ago? America is so evil, so observed Dmitry Dudeman and people like Richard Wormbrandt, that he couldn't believe they, those two men, couldn't believe it was still here. Couldn't believe God hadn't put it away. But look at the people. Look what's happened to them. They're gone. They're already dead. So, and that's the bulk. Oh, I'm not saying you can't get, you know, you, you don't find a conscious being here or there, but in general, whether it's through fear or whatever, they themselves have also gone and bowed down along with John Boehner at the same, about the same time. They've gone and drank the Kool-Aid for Obama and secretly they realize he's the one and they know their daddy is Lucifer, and they understand that, and they're hoping and praying he's the one, and they're ready to serve and give their life, if necessary, to bring about his kingdom. And they, uh, folks, I'm not kidding. This is really real. This is really what they're, what they're thinking. That's how they think. And they go, how can they do this? How can they break that law? It's, there's no longer laws. They can do anything they want to do. They're just, it's all about who, who you're going to serve now. So wouldn't that be the man of perdition, brother? See, I mean, come on, give it up. That's got to be the guy, right? We've never seen this before. Just because you've never seen the rise of a dictator before and the fall of a nation doesn't mean that, you know, all these guys are possessed by Satan to a certain degree. Hitler was, Stalin was, Mao was. The Chinese kids that murdered all their parents and stuff were, obviously, possessed. The devil has been here. He said, well, the devil hasn't been thrown down yet. Well, then I don't know what that was, but that's pretty much like the devil being thrown down here because it's been uh, in recent history and again and again and again in tyrannical regimes throughout history. uh, Look at the Maya, look at all these. You don't think the Maya, that you say, well, look at the bloodthirsty Maya drinking the, the, you know, cutting the heads off, eating the hearts, throwing the carcasses down the the bloody steps and Chichen Itza and and elsewhere. Don't think for a minute... um, you know, this is nothing new. The divine king, the divine pharaoh, nothing new. They've been, that's been going on there too. And, and so throughout history and, and, and also regimes in India and in China and elsewhere have all had their possession and the devil's been here building his pyramids. Wasn't that amazing how that Patrick guy what was his name? I can't even remember. The Irish guy. He was always so pleasant. He was so competitive. He really wanted to get somewhere with his books. He wrote Pyramid of the Apocalypse, and he was claiming that, you know, the pyramid is the monument of Isaiah 1919, or whatever it was. He had this whole theory, but it was, it, it was what we got into a fight. It wasn't predicated on the pyramid being evil, which is, you know, me, me from day one, I was shown. I mean, it's, the obelisk is the same as the pyramid, and pyramids, obelisks, all those, you know, are of Satan. And one day, um, they will be removed from the planet as a as an abomination of, you know, to God. I mean, can't we not get this? And you know, so it, he 
he just got so mad at me for, for arguing, and then he went running to the comfort of Steve Quayle and, and uh, the group over there that um, keep giving you false prophecies, false this, false that, focusing on really deep, dark, you know, supernatural things to keep you hooked into their radio shows and buying their stuff and going to their conferences. And I told you how many years ago that that would lead nowhere, and has it? It's led nowhere. And I, I, so I'm not going to focus on this again uh, because we went through their, the, um, the whole thing where they, uh, you know, where Quayle put out a memoranda that if anyone comes on my show, uh, they would never be allowed on his show again because I am of the devil. That's what he wrote. And that's what he sent around to all his people. And they shared it with, like Tom Horn shared it with me and people like that. I said, well, goodbye, Tom. Go with your, uh, go bow down, buddy. So, of course, how could I listen to him again after I saw what he did, you know, and, and what the deal was? And so, you know, and then, and then Russ Dizdar was another one. Did the same thing. And then he told someone I know that, uh, that basically um, I'm too unstable, so he had to depart company from me because I'm too unstable, which is putting out a lie and character assassination. And since he's done that and since he does that, I've, you know, I've, don't mind mentioning his name as being part of that quail thing, of that whole deal that went on there. And they've all tried, and what he wanted, I know Dizdar wanted to have this radio thing, and he had wanted to, to be able to make a living at it. So they did what they had to do. It's throw me under the bus so that they could, that's why you didn't see him after a certain point, because, because that was the thing with quail. If he went over there, he was, had to reject me. And then, of course, it's nice to have a cover story of falseness, like I'm too unstable. That, that is a lie. So he's a liar. It's that simple. It's just open, shut, that's it, boom, done. I move on. But, I mean, that's, you know, and, and so we go on like that. I'm not going to sit here and allow people with false prophecies and touting themselves as men and women of God and putting out fear-based propaganda to get you to buy their trinkets of gold or whatever and hold them in any kind of high esteem. But that's what this Rima had to say. This is what we had to do today. You know, they're doing it to you again and again and again. Making you feel like you're part of some community. Keep tuning in and we'll keep giving you the answer. We'll keep giving you little crumbs until one day, you know, then the Lord will come and sweep you all away. The good Lord will come and take you all away. It's just like the Aerosmith song. Even they had a little bit of rapture to it. Um, you know, you're not going to be lying face down in the muck uh, where the Chinese are plowing you under with their uh, combines and their, <laughs> and their tillers. Uh, no, you're going to be, you know, especially taken up and then you're going to come back and smash the devil with Jesus in this great epic cartoon fight. They've got, you know, so, you know, I hate to just get down to it, but, you know, in this manner, but you see, this rapture thing is propaganda. There is no doubt in my mind that people are translated from time to time, backwards and forwards, and it may not be a famous story like, like Elijah, but that there's, there's all, all kinds of mysteries here about being with the Lord and being caught up with the Lord and being cast away by the Lord. I mean, an individual harpazo, if you will, rather than a collective one. And there's no doubt in my mind that um, we've had heinous criminality to the extent where people could say in, in the death camps in Nazi Germany, Lord, you know, God forsook us. I'm not saying there are Christians in the camps. I mean, they're mainly Jews, but they're there were Catholics, Polish, and so forth, who had, you know, I'm sure wondered where the Lord was in all this. Evil far worse than you've experienced, and they didn't get picked up. They had to go through it. And the ones that actually did the best, some, some of the ones that actually survived, it's because they had a strong faith in God and constant prayer and constant ritual in prayer. They kept repeating the, you know, whether it be their communion or their... Um, uh, Jewish rituals or whatever it was, they kept they kept on with that and uh, honoring God through it, and that actually got them through it. Um, or we have the World War II gulags and um, uh, prisons in um, 
you know, in Asia. And we have the, the you know, uh, the torturing of, uh, of Americans in, in uh, Japanese prisons. And then we have the internment of the Japanese. And certainly in all of these, when people are in prison, they're wondering, has God forsaken us? I mean, you know, torture in Vietnam to, to no end, torture that leads to death, uh, dismemberment and you know, just horrible things. Okay, so all those horrors have been going on nonstop, you know, uh, and yet people think that they... This is the worst it could possibly be and that any minute we're going to be caught away and raptured out of here because the Lord's not going to allow us to go through the, the punishment meant for, you know, the Revelation 18 punishment meant for them. Certainly he's not going to do that to his bride. And certainly they have a point that makes sense until you equate history in of all the atrocities in history that God didn't intervene there, yet they were devout. And comes to mind is, you know, the underground church in China and elsewhere who have actually prayed for persecution here so the church could become strong, so faith could become strong. That persecution actually equals stronger faith, more fidelity with God. You know, less of an occupation with silly stories about um, alien invasions and whatnot. I'm not, you know, yeah, they're there. And, you know, well, actually, invasion, they never left, really, did they? You're dealing with a, yeah, they could put on a show and fly around and land and, you know, have tea with the president. And, uh, they can do all that, you know. But, but where, where the president is, you know, the new pharaoh and, and how their, the temple rituals are going, can be multiplied by all the congressional offices, and then you can wind out to all the corporate offices and all the owners of corporations and entertainment and, you know, every industry there is on earth is caught up in this hierarchy. So the same temple rituals that go on in Washington are going on everywhere, globally. And, you know, what God is looking at, and, and you know, I'm just, I'm just, this is what I think, is he's got some kind of thing going where it's almost like the Job, you know, it's very much in the, in the context of Job where he's talking to Satan and saying, here, look at my son Job and I'll do this to him and I'll do that to him and he won't give me up, you know. And, oh, I'll be, I'm going to torture him and I'm going to do all this stuff to him and strip him of his family and just make his life a whole living hell and then he'll tell me you're a piece of crap. You know, more or less surmising. And... That process of Job is happening with each and every one of the saints. You don't come here for a vacation. You come here to be, you know, burnished. And, you know, and you know probably the worst torture of all is the psychological torture of not knowing who you're dealing with and not knowing when something's going to hit you out of the blue, not being completely comfortable, not feeling like you really have a home or you belong. Well, that's good because you're going to die anyway in the home that you live in or the apartment, or wherever you lay your head, isn't really yours anyway, ultimately. It's, when you're dead, what does it matter? You know, it, you can't take it. It's, it's just a temporary shelter that we say, thank you, Lord, for this shelter. This is beautiful and wonderful. Thank you so much. And everyone, I've always felt that way about every place I've lived. I lived in a $50 a month apartment and fixed it up, and I just was like, I had my stereo there, and everything was going there, and I was playing drums in a band, and I could easily afford the rent, and it was pretty cool. And the girlfriend was a, a waitress at the place that was only just walking around the corner, you know, until a guy got stabbed on our um, front porch. It was cool up until about that point. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, that's why the red's cheap. There's violence here. <laughs> and, and, you know, you might, you, you know, now we have to have like an armed guard take you know, walk you to work because it's, really not going to be, uh, you know, walking uh, to and from, uh, it's like a Denny's type of thing, walking to and from the restaurant um, at, 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 you know, two in the morning uh, may get your throat slit. So, okay. So, you know, eventually moved to the, to the burbs, a lot more expensive. But uh, yeah, that was downtown. Downtown has its advantages until, you know, and that was, you know, it was just, it was, horrifying because I, the guy was stabbing the other guy with a machete 
and and you know right in front of me and I couldn't get him to say I didn't know if he's going to turn on me so I mean it was really a scary moment you know and then the police eventually and the guy got thrown in jail and then the other guy didn't die thank god he but uh you know there there was you know the the human being hacking another to death you know so <laughs> You know, I kind of knew what we were capable. At that time, I thought, well, I wouldn't do that. But I mean, we're, I think everyone's capable, you know, in a war situation uh, of that kind of violence. Certainly, that was no more violent than what we see in war with nice kids going to war. Well, they try to turn them into people that can, can hack up a guy to death. And so that's what they try to do. But... It's just a sad thing, you know, that we have to be talking about, you know, I don't even really bother talking about the, the other, you know, like ancient alien obsessed, conspiracy obsessed guests on coast to coast or, um, you know, or on, you know, Christian stations or teaching about the end times or, you know, I don't really focus on them because it's already gone. They're already, you know, they began corrupt and they're going to end corrupt and they feel somehow that they're bowing down to Satan or whatever they do in secret isn't going to affect their status of being, of going with the Lord. And they say, because that's just sin. It's not really anything but sin. So therefore, my sins are forgiven and everything's cool. And that's what they teach at, say, the Calvary Chapels and the, all the evangelical churches and the, the Rick Warrens and the Willow Creeks and all the different kind of big Christian outlets. They teach that it's okay, you can join us and um, it, um, and it won't count against you with God. So that's how you get that confusion. And then that's what's taught to children and youth groups, um, and the ones that don't get it uh, pretty soon find themselves not being part of that church. And that has been the issue for, I don't know how long that's gone on, but there is no church. The only church is the remnant worldwide, and other than that, there is no church. Because these are the same people that if anything happened when the government comes to do this or that to them and take their Bibles and make them renounce Jesus, they'll, they'll do it all. They're not gonna stand. They're not going to be martyred. Rather, they're going to spy on you and turn you in and, you know, be a place where you can get chipped. I can see that with the churches very clearly. You know, they're going to really try to help regulate and get us through this martial law that's coming so that we don't all have to stay there. And, and, and yeah, there is a potential of martial law. But my, you know, in... Having to bring this forth, the Lord just told him to go forth and talk about the people that are, um, and I'm not going to name them all by name, you know, but that there are, are people who want your allegiance, who want to, you know, lead you little by little through the end times in, in, this, in this scenario. And they have their shows and they have their fear and they're going to prove to you over and over again that you know, Obama is the Antichrist or whatever it is. It, it doesn't matter. This is across the board. And I've I, you know, I'm, I'm almost feeling like this issue, Obama, the Antichrist or not, is a non-starter issue. It's a ridiculous thing to think about. I've, I've, I've even getting to that point that, that this is completely ridiculous to think about. It's not our job to identify who the man of sin is or isn't. You know, as far as I'm concerned, whether you have Stalin, Hitler, Obama, any of these people, including Clinton and Bush, and, and the list goes on and on, American presidents, foreign presidents, Chinese presidents, you know, dictators all uh, in their hierarchies. And their, they've all been Luciferian. They've all been, I mean, Kennedy was the one that stood up, right? And he got whacked. He wanted to expose this situation we're talking about. And he wound up whacked. And so people say, you know, uh, uh, and then listening to Alex Jones lately in a couple of shows, he um, he's saying, People have warned him, well, do you want your car to blow up? Do you want this? Because if you keep doing this, this is the kind of thing they do. And yes, but then again, that's the kind of thing they've done. The entire time I've been in America, that's been going on. I've seen people taken out, 
right and left since I was a kid. You know, for whatever reason, they were in the way of this. They were in the way of a deal. They were, uh, they were, uh, they knew something they shouldn't know. They saw something they shouldn't have seen, so they're not here anymore. And and on and on. It's just called the cleanup crew, and that that cleanup crew has been around for, for, from day one. The way see, we need to step back, and you need to look at the world, not through a microcosmic lens, but through a wide lens, and you need to see all the countries not just America and Western Europe. And you need to see the history of the world and the way God has dealt time and time again with civilization, the rise of the secret underneath society. In other words, you have the template of civilization and righteousness, and underneath you have the Luciferian thing where people, they run and cheat, and everyone goes, oh, <laughs> applaud as they run over. And when enough people run over there, the Lord collapses the civilization on to the next one. But this is the end of time. There's only so much time in the, in the, in the Bible, then it runs out. I mean, there could only be this many years. They used to say this years ago, that it had to end in 1988 because that's all the time that was allotted. Or this man, I remember when... Uh, James Lloyd was going on and on about how Boutros, Boutros, Gali was the Antichrist. He said he had to be because he studied the Bible really hard and this is where the Lord's led him and it turned out to be and New York is going to be nuked or whatever and that's about the time I kind of tuned out because it turned out, again, a false prophecy, false prediction in the name, but yet in a religious Jesus context where you think you're not going to get lied to. No, I, don't, I believe he was sincere. I've got nothing negative to say about him. I don't know him very well. Just, just it, it, It's just another public figure in the religious game, and that's what it is, who said something that yet again didn't come true, and yet again to the delight of all the people. that You know, if there was something supernatural happening on earth, they would send you know, all their resources to quash it if they could. You know, they would want to go to war with it immediately. Anything of God, anything supernatural, they, powers that be, and anything that's not supernatural in the same way as their fallen angel, uh, gods they worship, anyone, you know, walking around with some kind of powers or something, they're going to they're gonna move the entire military to uh, sequester that person and make sure they quash it or try to harness it. I wonder how many people had powers that that happened to. You never, never to be heard from again. If you want, if you want to basically be eliminated from the scene, just you know, if you have powers or you've been given powers, instead of showing them off, that will just get them to, to you know, pick you up. Uh, you know, maybe you just like say you have powers like Carrie, right? Carrie, you could actually, you know, and there was a new movie about telekinesis too, where the the kids started off doing small things and eventually they started killing people right and left, and uh, so you could just kill anyone you wanted with your mind because you could move them around. You could put them up in the air. And then there was another one. There's been three that I've seen besides Carrie. Uh, one where there was this little kid that had the power of telekinesis. Um, I mean, it, was a, it was a modern movie. What was the name of the movie? Uh, Loopers. Loopers uh, it had Bruce Willis in it. And, uh, no. Anyway, there was this kid. And um, he had these special powers. They used to hide the kid because they didn't want, you know, anyone to find out. And uh, he could put like the house and the, every, you know, the, the whole field up in the air and, and he could just rip people's guts out with his mind. And whenever he got upset, that's what he would do. And eventually he was going to become a great leader. So they travel back in time to kill him to prevent him from becoming this great, powerful leader that will, you know, with nobody could fight. It was like, if you have powers like that, see, that's the kind of power that, that I would associate with the beast. The beast... No one can make war with him. So he would be the leader of the whole world because he has these supernatural powers. If you go against him, even think about it, that it's already connected mentally. You're just going to go ahead and say, walk into a buzzsaw, you know, one day. You know, that kind of thing. And, and that's the kind of thing they're thinking about Obama. And that, you know, I'm not, I, I'm just saying that's what they're thinking. So they don't want to walk into a buzzsaw. So they're bowing down before and, and humiliated in front of you because it's a paradigm of what's going to happen to you next. And you don't need soothsayers to see what is before you.
but also just because you're seeing that level of corruption, which you, you know, it was there when, in 1965, you just didn't see it. It was there in 1972, but you just weren't tuned in. You know, you, there, there was a forbidden area. What I'm talking about is, you know, seeing into their world of the matrix, let's say, using that as a metaphor, and then being able to show you or tell you what they're doing. And even though I see it like that, I saw it like that in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. It didn't do me any good to have those insights because they just tell you, oh, well, that's crazy. I hope he doesn't keep talking about this. You know, it's like that's, that, that's, that's how they be. Yes, they know it's real, but they just don't want to talk about it because they tend to get in trouble. So everyone keeps a lid on it. Everyone keeps quiet about it. And maybe we can all succeed together. You know, the rhetoric, succeed, we can only do it together. That's, it's all tight at all the rhetoric of the supernatural realm. All of that. Of their realm. And making war with the saints, which is a big key in Book of Daniel, Book of Revelation, repeated constantly. It's one of the seals. It comes up later. It's, it's, it's definitely, you know, the, the whole spirit of Revelation 13 through 18 and, and beyond. That war with the saints is something that um, is, uh, is part of what, you, you know, that corrupt leader would do. They would make war against a religious group or against the saints. And in America, land of the free, home of the brave, home of the uh, Judeo-Christian ethics of God, where the Ten Commandments is still over the Supreme Court, you know, this is that home and the people of God being now vilified because Obama the conqueror can conquer them. He can go to those states where they want to hold their guns and he'll conquer just like Abraham Lincoln. So that the Abraham Lincoln meme is running through. Abraham Lincoln means, that meme means Obama will crush the states. That's all that means. They're touting it because they want, they want, the news media wants to see him go crush those awful people that hold their guns to get them. And if they have Bibles, then get them. This group here that's been here, they want to eradicate them from the United States. And that's part of their new world order. Interesting how the Christian persecution, which is really all it is, uh, ended up coming full force. And then the next step would be, we need to kill them. They get the, it hasn't got progressed to that stage yet. And it could... I think, I think the people here are so brainwashed and stupid at this point that um, I really, I've talked to people. They're, they're, they, they don't have a clue of anything. They have no clue. They've been conquered. They've been divided. They've drank the Kool-Aid, and they're going to go off the cliff into the arms of their God and, and, and die. And the very people they're supporting right now are the ones who are going to stab the knife in. And they have no clue that's going to happen to them. And I see this all over. This is the majority of people that voted for Obama. They have that attitude. And they don't realize that they're going to be, um, they're going to be sorry that they bowed down to a king and they didn't, you know, the only reason that we didn't have tyranny here, the only reason that th this thing was kept at bay for so long was because of faith in God Strong pulpits, they weren't always corrupt, you know. Uh, faith in God, strong pulpits, knowledge of morals, um, moral teachings in college, and things like that. The only reason you have this is because of communist infiltration. You know, Marxist, communist, socialist, leftist uh, brainwashing of kids to when they get, you know, in, in teaching, you know, the destruction of the family and all the... All the planks of the manifesto destroy the family, bring in sex, drugs, rock and roll, perverted sex, whatever, and pedophilia is another big one. Bring all that in because then the people will be easy to control, then give them drugs and, and give them gimme so they don't have to work and they can just sit there and be vegetables. Well, they have no respect for you if you're listening to this. None. They're just going to, they're, they're going to make you feel like you're part of the group. You're not in that club. They're going to roll over you with the, you know, just the same way they're going to roll over everybody else. You've been set up. You've been taught to think that if you sit there and uh, you know you 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 help Obama get the rich or whatever, and they're they're going to pay you. They're not going to pay you. The rich they're going after are not the ultra rich elites anyway. They're going after moderately rich people 
uh, to, for the purpose of not letting them become powerful. And that's why the tax code is there. We've talked about this. It's not there um, uh, because people need it for, um, to tax more people, more revenue, blah, 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 to pay the bills. It's to run the bills up to justify taxing people so they can never get wealthy, so that no one can ever get ahead. And making the poor people jealous and doing class warfare so they all vote to kill the rich. And that's the same old story. The old tactic, divide and conquer, has been done in, in communist Russia and in China and everywhere else. But, you know, I'm surrounded, unfortunately, with unconscious people who do not think. And, and, and yes, at this point, they're probably putting people on any kind of people who think are being kind of looked at like, yeah, you're going to wind up on a list because you're conscious. We can't have you walking around conscious of what's going on because you're a threat to us getting our agenda done. And it's, just, it's like, me, I'm no threat. Because there's nothing new here. This is what happened in the day of Caesar. There's nothing new here. This happened at the time of Genghis Khan, Alexander the Great, whatever. It's nothing new here. There's nothing new here. The conquerors, you know, America conquered from within, and the conquerors, Obama and company, what they need to let you know what your status is so you can bow down properly. If you won't, if you refuse to see the truth that you, the debt was run up in your name so that you have to pay for it so that your oligarchs are really the Chinese and so you, you know what I mean? And you have to, we're taking orders from them now and they know you're not going to like hearing that but the reality is you were bought and sold already. Legally, it's legal that you're a slave, they have every right to do it. They just need to let you know and educate you to understand what has happened here so that you will then make the right decision and, and like everyone else who's bowing down to, to serve the master but really serve the, the, the world by, by giving your allegiance now, hoping to secure a good place in the, in the next situation after martial law or whatever. Now, these are their plans and their plans have not always gone in a straight line. We were back to this Obama not being um, the coronation. He wasn't coronated. It was really interesting. It's how Beyonce was lip syncing the um, Star Spangled Banner. In other words, it was an empty suit, an empty situation. He is an empty vessel. She was an empty singer. It was an empty ceremony. There was no coronation of a king at all. No, no, no way. So he is not right now the man of perdition and he's not the Antichrist. Period. What can I do about it? If they're selling you on that, um, tune in. He might become the Antichrist next week. I mean, we've had that progressive Antichrist type of thing. But the more time's gone on here, the more I realize, you know, this is more of a universal thing, this idea of being the leader being possessed by Satan and doing all these awful things to the people um, because their God is, is Lucifer. And Lucifer's there to punish humanity for existing and corrupting it, the genome, and corrupting it, killing it all, or corrupting it via genome, or giving people ideas of having a super virus that will kill everybody. Uh, that's been the devil's program from the beginning. Why has he not been successful if the technology has been there? And I contend it's because there's a restraining hand. There are people in America praying who are waking up in their mausoleums called churches and realizing, oh my God, I've been controlled and handled by this jerk and his wife. <laughs> These people have come to my house and we've fellowshiped. It's really just been a prison, a mind control prison. Yes, religion has been used as a mind control prison from way before you were born. I'm not saying everyone, but in general, religion around the world and politics before this country, but in, you know, overtly, but invertly, you know, under the covers there, religion and politics are in bed with each other. The politicians are the priests. The temple is D.C. You know, the secret uh, rituals go on in public. 
Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter whether you can see that or not. I, I watch with amazement because everything to me means something else. So I, I'm able to you know, see it and kind of like decipher it. But then, you know, it's always, it's always met with, yeah, but you know what? This was going on in ancient Rome. Absolutely. Yeah, but this is nothing new. Absolutely. What does this have to say about our faith in our God, Jesus, and his relationship with us and the things that we've witnessed have been subtle things. In other words, we haven't been given powers to go, you know, you've been given the power of prayer and prayer changes history. It's very subtle, so it's not like you're throwing lightning bolts because if that were the case, they would, you know, they'd, they'd come get you. Uh, and the, 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 the smarter ones realize that when you pray, really bad things can happen, but the, the stupider ones on the... Illuminati side, which is, a, you know, 50, over 50% of the people here. To be a Democrat today down with that is really to be an Illuminati stooge at this point. And, you know, to be a Republican, I suppose, too, because the Republicans are all, the Democrats and Republicans are holding hands and singing Kumbaya now on the debt ceiling. You notice that. Remember who predicted that, that Boehner would give him anything he wants? Remember? Predicted he would bow down and what that all meant? Now you see them holding hands singing Kumbaya? Prediction, predicted, and fulfilled. Then there's the who can make war with the beast, but of course that also means that the beast would be above being uh, targeted by any kind of military thing as well. You know? So there is that kind of comic book supernatural battle that, that you, know, you can look at that way. I think that the Rima I'd received from Malachi 4.5 and I'm going to get into this. But yeah, those of you waiting around to be picked up, uh, you're not getting out of it that easily. And, uh, you know, I, I, I wish there was, you know, the old dad was going to be driving the, the car to the evil camp and getting you out of your, picking you up from those evil camp counselors and those abusive people teasing you and beating you up. And then your dad shows up, summer camp is over, and you get to escape. <laughs> you know, I, I suppose uh, camp, camps really today are just indoctrination centers, that's all. They, they teach you about the good and right aspects of government and being a good citizen and all that, and then eventually they lay on you, yeah, but you know, there's this game <laughs> that you gotta play. So, okay, so Malachi 4, 5, I had to go get my, you know, I'm kind of shooting first, aiming later, and you know, and kind of just, hopefully I'm not hitting and missing everything. I've, I absolutely am. It's a fluid situation here, folks. That's all I can tell you. Matthew, and now Malachi. Okay. The day comes that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly, shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Okay, that's the Revelation 18, Smackdown, and 19. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow as the calves in the stall. Where are you going to grow? You're going to grow here. Despite that happening, here you are. And you shall tread down the wicked. You shall tread down the wicked. For they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord. So now you can't really tread down the wicked now, can you? No, you cannot. That's a power you don't have. Remember you the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb uh, for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming and great and dreadful day of the Lord. Dreadful. Even looking upon him is dreadful because we, just, we would just burn up. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Okay, 
the, in other words, Elijah returns to the heart first, to the children and the parents, because when it says fathers and, and, and uh, children or fathers and sons, you know, spoken of in the Old Testament way, it, today you would just translate it as, you know, uh, it's not a gender specific thing. So he comes to the people, to the mothers and fathers and the children, and that Elijah um, uh, return comes to all the people. And they, um, the division that was there is ended just prior to the Lord's coming for his bride and to establish himself upon the earth. He's not really coming to come and leave. He, when he comes, he comes. And first he comes in, you know, Elijah has come because what this verse means, the deeper level of it means, Elijah comes and reminds you who you are. Elijah is like that, you know, kind of like working with the Holy Spirit. You have the Elijah Spirit who basically turns you to the Father or reminds you, prodigals, left and right, who you belong to. The sheep hear my voice. That's a, you know, what causes that is Elijah. And then the Lord lives within us, right? He comes within. First Elijah wakes you up to the Lord, then the Lord and lives within you. The kingdom is manifest from within to without. Because within is really the real reality. And the without here that we see is really the illusion. It's backwards. But we think this is real and the inner life isn't that real because we're cut off from it. But basically the New Testament, you know, and, and the Old Testament are revealing a, you know, a mystery. And the mystery is that, you know, what is without within becomes without. And, and the Lord doesn't need, um, you know, in that day, in that day of the Lord's kingdom, of that transformation of, of everything, in that day, um, there is no memory of them because they really never existed. And that's something you have to get in your mind and not take things personally. The people that do wickedly, you know, when they're gone, they never, it will be as if they never were, as it says in Obadiah, as if they never were. There is no memory because it says in the book of Revelation that every tear will be dried, meaning all the memories are gone. See, that the tears dried means they never existed. That's what that means. So they never existed. This experience really never existed either. It might be looked at as just kind of a bad dream in some ways. But uh, I don't even need to really warn so much the people that won't make it to the people that will. I mean, I mentioned a couple of carnal things like, you know, people in there and their radio shows and their... Because... The Lord wants to wake people up from this delusion they're in of keeping on with the fear-mongering stuff and they keep feeling hor horrified and unsatisfied and um, even left alone and they keep begging for the Lord to come take them out of all this. Take me away from all this. It's a, it's a, it's a um, common fantasy. Take me away from all this. We all have to clean up our act and become sinless and become whole and fast, do whatever we're going to do and pray because soon the Lord's coming to take us away from all this. Well, I'd say, yes, we should be doing that anyway. Soon the Lord's coming to establish himself upon the earth is really what it is. In other words, he made it. It's his. It's not the devil's. The devil doesn't own this. It's the Lord's. And um, that's the bottom line. He's not coming to, you know, scoop people out of here. Now, he's coming in as a return. And those souls that are meant to be with him will be with him in his kingdom. And the kingdom is all the planets and everything. It's everything. Everything will submit before the Lord. You know, and that's, you know, they can run around and try to have their kingdom and new world order and, you know, kill as many people as possible. Um, the bloodlust of Obama is really, you know, probably going to, it's probably going to really increase when he's able to really do a lot. And um, yet he's seen as a man of peace. It's the most unbelievable thing in the world. But we have to look at it in context. This is not the first guy that's been like this. He's disrespected by about half the population. 
there is no adoring masses. They're, they're adoring verse. So he's trying to create a war so that, you know, and confusion. And by the time he gets done with his petty wars and confusion, his thing will be over. But he can name himself a dictator, but he might not. But that might not happen. And they may not get their new world order right now. So how many times am I going to sit here and say, whoops, that last batch of predictions didn't happen. The folks kept hanging on and the rapture didn't occur in 1999 or 1987 or whatever. Didn't occur in this last year. They all predicted that it would happen by now, right? They all predicted it would happen by now. It did not occur, and now I've heard some shows, just a sampling of them, where they're going, homina, 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 I thought we'd be out of here by now. Well, here's what's up now. Okay, tell me. What's happening now? Well, here it is. The reason we're not up yet, because this and this and this and this. So really, our timing was off slightly, but you know, this is what it really is. Hey, once you get to the point of that sort of justification, you really lost the ball game. You really need to repent. You you put out a false prophecy. You know, you really need to say, you know what? I was wrong on that. It wasn't really a prophecy. Maybe I said it was, but it really wasn't, and I'm sorry. And uh, I really don't know when the rapture is or if there is one. I really don't know what the end of days is, if there is one. I really don't know that what the Bible is showing is that there is an end, mathematical end, to this situation because I'm not sure that the math we're going by is the math God's going by. So it's kind of like he's really not in my box like I thought he was. I can't put him in my shoebox anymore because that makes me look like an idiot. And I'm sure some of the people that, like I mentioned, that you know, denounced me or called me a Satanist or whatever they were doing back then, with, with, with the, obviously it was just a power struggle, you know. But whatever it was, um, it was a great educational thing for me because it showed me, you know, what the true nature of, you know, people that I really respected, I, I'd listened to them, and that taught me to not trust anybody, to trust no one, and nothing they say. And to not do anything they say. You know, and um, people that I had respected, it's not that I disrespect them, but I just see them as, you know, fallen like everybody else and putting themselves up on a, on, a, on a pedestal and putting God in a box and telling, you know, I'll tell you the inside information of what my sources are telling me and what the Lord is telling me. And here, is, here, here are the true prophets and I'll name them for you. And setting themselves up as little despot kings themselves. How is Obama any different than them? You know, they all know, you know, that, that Obama has to, you know, he has to please them by becoming that, that supernatural being. And if he doesn't, then they will be disappointed with him. And so far, anyone that says he is the Antichrist would, you know, be looking at scripture and, you know, they, it, would, it would make sense to me that they would say that, but they would not be accurate at this point. Because the Antichrist, no one can make war, they have supernatural powers. How do you know he doesn't have those? Well, he's still using drones. He'd be able to zap them with his mind or something, you know. It's, uh, um, <clears throat> and also I want to mention that a lot of the names of the kids that were killed by Obama, um, he's killed f far more children than these mass shootings that they keep ginning up, these psyops that the government does in order to grab the guns. And it's just really sad, you know, but Obama's no different in that he's a child killer too. And it's all about the blood. The, the thing is, is that, but they were all ready letting blood in the temples from the beginning because the deep dark secret is the cult that runs things is a bloodletting cult, the same as the Maya, same as the Egyptians, same as the Chinese, same as the Indians, same as any, everywhere there's an obelisk or a pyramid. Same thing, same religion. Open and shut case, done. And there's a weird part, 
like when you people have revelations about this and they get onto it and then they walk around in public and the weird stuff starts happening to them because you know it's it's like they've seen too much and they're being punished and all that you get beyond that too it's like uh you know the same old thing same old you know this is so boring yes it's manifesting yes the spirits are running around yes the hive mind puppets are doing their puppet thing in front of you to scare you yes they're blah 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 yes they're stalking me yes they're targeting us with yeah you know but there's nothing new under the sun and those who wield the power and are part of the luciferian thing they get their noses up in the air and they're laughing at you you fool you're getting pummeled when I'm sitting up here and I'm, you know, and they're, and they're causing it and they enjoy it because they have a blood lust. Such has been the awful way of the world and the awful way of humanity from the beginning. Such has been the awful, you know, it could be so nice. Yeah, if it was all you, all lambs, I mean, lambs wouldn't crucify Jesus, you know. They would be the ones weeping, not, not putting the nails in. The church told me that I put the nails in, and I kept thinking about that for about 15 years. And finally, I came to the conclusion, I don't think I would. And I don't think my friends would, but I, I'm sure you would. <laughs> so, so, you know, there's that, and that's how I started learning about us and them, you know, and then being able to see it more and more. You know, they want you all to say the same oath and that we're all the same and Jesus is just waiting for those people of humanity that just at random wake up and come to Jesus. And that's absolutely not the way it works. It's genetic. I'm sorry. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's already written before you were born even. So, you know, you, if you belong to God, you really have no say. If you belong to the devil, you really have no say about it. Really, I mean, ultimately, there is no free will in that sense. You know, you're... If, if it was like what the um, pastors were all saying and the teachers and whatnot and the, and the expositors and whatnot, if it was like what they were all saying in their interpretation of scripture, then you would have um, a different result today. It's not. It's wheat and tares. <clears throat> it's, you know, it's those that belong to the devil versus those who belong to the Lord. If a person is really a truth seeker and they go, I don't know, but they say they're agnostic, but they're standing on truth and the Constitution, things like that, then they belong to the Lord. I know a guy who's like a radical leftist, he thinks. He belongs to the Lord. And well, he hasn't had that epiphany yet, but, you know, that's basically it. I know other people that say they're with the Lord and full on, you know, and they belong to the devil. And they're like prodigals on the other side. I've depersonalized it, and I don't care. <clears throat> you know, the people that have said things and done things, of course they will. Of course, the little sacrifice of me back in the, in the you know, radio war days was so that, you know, people could then sign on and get a boost. Doesn't bother me. In other words, you know, it was like, you know, I was there in that drama, could have been anybody, but uh, the price was sell out and then you can be a radio star. And, you know, and because I understand that, I am unstable and unloving and hateful. But, I mean, isn't that the way it always is? You've got to give something to get something. You know, um, if, if you want to be a, a big star in the Republican Party, you go get... You, you go get under, you know, you go take a video of them saying how they want to put us in concentration camps and then go put that on television or YouTube and then you'll be a star or vice versa. And the other party, like the, the, the film on Romney that cost him the election where he said the 47% won't vote for me and it was Jimmy Carter's grandson or whatever that took that video. Now he's a star. So you, you give something to get something and there's always a price. Just like the debt of $16 trillion belongs to the American people making them serfs of the Chinese right now. In other words, my vision has already been fulfilled, folks. It wasn't a vision of just seeing, you know, a reality of 3D. It was the idea that right now, this day, the Chinese own you legally. If you belong to the Lord, you belong to the Lord. But I mean, you know, it's, it, we're not talking about that kind of ownership. They own you legally because of the debt. No one is worth, and so what they're trying to do 
is eventually coax you. And, you know, the Chinese have ordered Obama to disarm the public and they're going to disarm the public. They have to do what they're told. It doesn't matter if people put up a fight, they're going to disarm the public. It doesn't matter. They will bring military and who will fire on American citizens and they'll do whatever they have to do to disarm the public now because it's been ordered. Not only do they own the debt, but they own the land. That was the, the plan all along. Your politicians sold you out. This is classic. Now they own you and you need to learn who to bow down to. It's going to be the Chinese. And they're going to come and they're going to take your guns and they're going to take your land and they're going to basically retrain you and you're going to be, learn to be a, a serf or a slave. And if that's not acceptable, then you can also go off to the, uh, to the next world or be in prison. And, and, and you know, there, there's, Jesus is not going to rescue you from that. It doesn't matter anymore to me how long or short the time is. Timing the end and long and short the time only gets people to not do anything and sit there and wait. The Lord wants his actors to act in every generation. They always get obsessed with the end and then they sit there on their, on their hands and they don't do exploits, as it says in the book of Daniel. They don't, they don't you know, they're over, they're, in a way they're conquered. They're not really participating anymore. They're not fighting back. They're not providing an alternative voice. They're not saying that, you know, look, the word of God here, you know, is, a, is the, you know, the way to go. And they're not teaching. They're just waiting to be rescued because they feel that this is it. You know, this, they've had enough. They haven't been tortured in a, in a concentration camp. They haven't been, you know, refugees of war, which is hell on earth. They haven't been subject to radiological uh, weapons which can, you know, they would be terminally sick until death and, you know, until cancer takes them or whatever. They haven't been, um, you know, they've been, they've been messed with genetically, but it hasn't turned them into hybrids for Satan. Um, they are not, uh, their children are still with them. Because if they had everything they want, no one would be allowed to have a child either. And genetics and birth and death would be in the hands of the scientist who would, who would make all children through a test tube and then train them for the various jobs so they would have maximum efficiency. That's where this leads. And actually, if you want to know where it leads, logically, it leads to machines taking over, which is like a lot of sci-fi movies. Machines basically end up dictating what happens and turning people into machines so there's no more people. Satan wins, no more humanity, God's, God's creation, uh, moot. It always goes to the same thing. So what does it matter about timing the end when that's the scenario? And they don't always get their scenario. You want to see a forever kingdom on the earth in 3D, but it wouldn't be in 3D. So that's the thing. I don't know if it does any good. I, I you know, I, um, I see the, uh, the show Ancient Aliens and I'll see like the pontificators on there. You know, George Norrie will show up and he'll say something about the ancient astronauts and then you'll have these UFO con men coming on and saying things. And, you know, the, the one guy bills himself as America's prophet. He could always predict the stock market. And, uh, he, he, you know, a guy who built people out of $6 million because he, he, he'd never been wrong in timing the market. And now the SEC is suing him. But he's, he's on ancient aliens. You know, he's, you know... Or the guy that says the kill shot is coming because I've remote viewed it. And on and on and on. Insane craziness and silliness and stupidity. And they cater to the, the stupidest part of you. Because when you have the Lord, you're already complete. So we lose that. And they focus on the dark stuff. And they'll focus on, you know, say satanic ritual abuse, which to me was just basic life 101 for children in growing up. Everyone was satanically ritually abused. I don't know anyone who wasn't really... Sat I actually don't know anyone from that era who wasn't satanically ritually abused. It's just the, 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 they're just not vocal about it because it happened to their parents because they were born into a, a blue blood of this society. So that was the deal. It was Lucifer that made all that happen. 
I'm, I'm looking at that and going, wow, that's interesting. Yeah, well, it, so there's always been a dictatorship, but it's not the Chinese. I mean, Satan's always had that, that status of owning people until you're set free by Jesus Christ, by the blood of Christ, and then you really are free indeed because you don't owe anything to the Chinese or to Satan or to anyone here. But then again, similarly, you're, you're not really a citizen of this country, of America, as you thought you were. You're a citizen of the kingdom of God and an ambassador of that kingdom, but that's all you are. And you're, you're, in a sense, you become a visitor here and you're observing as a witness what's going on, a la two witnesses, let's say. And you're here praying to end the suffering of people in the name of Jesus because that's the right thing to do. And that's the thing morally that you know you should do. And that's what we want to do. I, I don't want to, you know, play, play elbows in basketball here or compete or be in any kind of competitive thing with any broadcaster that is earnestly and sincerely going forth. All the ones I know that are saying, you know, rapture now, bombing, I guess all that, they're all sincere. Here's the problem, and here's why the Lord wants me to speak on it. It's the danger of getting your hopes up for something that doesn't happen again and again and eventually losing faith. And that, and that, you know, is more important than our individual egos, right? And I don't care if they denounce me as a heretic and, you know, a, a scoffer. I'm not scoffing anybody. I'm just, you know, if you've gotten to the point of sensationalism, then I guess I'm scoffing a little bit. I mean, you know, where you're, where you're, yes, my dear. Yeah. I know. Well, the sun's not up yet, but eventually it will be. There's nothing I can do for you right now. I'm going to just sit here. Okay? Now, everyone's hearing you. You call her Lassie, like Lassie. Yeah, you know, back in my searching for the East for answers day, we were, not that I enjoyed, you know, much about Tibetan Buddhism because I, did, I didn't get initiated into it because I, it just didn't, it, it eventually fell apart as a cartoon to me. But, um, so we named her Lhasa, you know, after the Tibet thing, because we thought that was, you know, a, you know, they were all about peace and love and, you know, standing up to the Chinese oppression and, you know, they, they were the smart people on the planet. And then you find out later, yeah, they're into the remote viewing, they're sorcerers and they're, they're, they're doing death whammies on people during World War II. And it's like, okay, okay, I get it. You know, I get it. I understand. There is just nothing new under the sun, man, whether he denies it or not. Even the, the religious leaders have that sin nature and there's nothing anyone can do about it. And, you know, the good people on the New Age side, they want to evolve out of it because they don't want to hurt anyone or anything and they don't want to be hurt. And I understand that. Not, not saying that there aren't good intentions here. It's just the truth, though it divides, it also saves. And so we had to share a little bit of truth with you today. And... Um, the um, as far as the juicy stuff that's going to happen with the uh, uh, the world, um, as far as the wars in the Middle East and the widening of things and the the whole Al Qaeda psyop that goes on, um, yeah, the, well, that's going to go on. You know, the gun confiscation and all the the you know taxes, confiscatory taxes, and really ultimately confiscation of wealth and 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 the putting people in prison. Yeah, they want to. That's you got to be punished for having participated in a, having profited in America while everyone else went starving. You need to be punished. <laughs> and you need to accept your fate and stop complaining. And you're not going to hear me complaining because even though I see this going on, there's, look, here's the thing. I have the power of prayer. I pray right now in the name of Jesus for this whole thing to be changed suddenly to show you, teach you a lesson. I pray, Lord, now that you change the whole scenario that all the people in the, the, the various prophetic cults would suddenly be upended on their ears. In other words, they would realize that their timing was off or something was off or they would get out of their comfort zones. I pray for a, an, an earthquake in the spirit right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that would just set us all right again, that would, that would be the thing that causes us to drop all our pet doctrines and just look at you, Lord, and just look at you for a moment before starting it up again. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, 
My cat is demanding attention. There's just never enough for you. There's never enough for you. There's never enough. It just never ends. <laughs> 14 years old. She's like a kitten almost. Yeah, I understand. But she's old. She's going to pass away and then there'll be more cats. And my dogs are going to die and there'll be more dogs. Someone very wiser than I said, uh, or wiser than me said, or wiser than I said, <laughs> it's been a long, my grammar. So, uh, life is a series of dogs. I don't know who said that, but in my life that's been so true. I've always had dogs and, and, and always had cats too. You want butter last? Okay. Let's see if I can. I'm, this is a casual talk. What can I say? Don't take me seriously. We're not having the bumper music and all the stuff that you're used to. Okay, here you go. Oh, you want me to bring it over there? Okay, there you go. But it's too cold, Daddy. It needs to be room temperature so it's all soft. Now, who lets their cat lick the butter and then use the butter after that? Isn't that disgusting? <laughs> It probably is. Are we done? The the yeah the vision of the of the Chinese replacement, it's already it's uh, fulfilled. See what I mean? It doesn't need to be fulfilled in terms of real estate. It's already fulfilled legally, so it happened. I mean that vision came due, and that's all it was about. And, you know, they believe that save for the few patriotic uh, enemies out there, that they will be able to convince people that they serve the Chinese and people will go along with it. And uh, they don't expect any opposition because they can always bring up the debt as the reason that makes perfect sense as to why they should be given millions and millions and millions and tens of millions of acres of land to farm and, and to make factories and to do things, and that will eventually employ whatever indigenous peoples are here, whether they be, doesn't matter what color they are or anything, whatever the people, the little people here will go work in those factories. And that is, you know, their idea. And meanwhile, they're going to all the pastors and saying Romans 13, so when we tell you to bow down to the Chinese, you'll get your flocks to do it because of Romans 13. Romans 13, that's a whole other discussion we'll have one day. Nobody, to my satisfaction, has resolved it. I've just set it aside and say, that's an abomination. You know, that shouldn't be, I mean, I can decipher it this way. Any government that's of God should be recognized and respected as being of God. If it's not of God, then it's not of God. Then that does not apply. If they're doing satanic rituals and having objects of worship in your face that are of Lucifer, then you can be sure that's not of God because God would not give you, if you're a good God-fearing person, he's not going to give you a Luciferian government. He just wouldn't do that. So therefore, parsing it perfectly, I might add, Romans 13 applies to Governments of God. Well, the only time anyone's going to get a government given of God, meaning that a righteous government with good God-fearing people who are doing the best, they're not perfect, to uphold the law, the law based on the law of Scripture and so forth. Okay, it, that would be a government that you respect and you follow and you give you know, honor to them that are serving because they're serving God. Yes, absolutely. I totally agree with it if that's what the situation is. If, on the other hand, evidence suggests that they are playing a double-minded game and it's just a two-tiered reality of this sort of, sort of America template on top of a Luciferian slave society that they have to teach you to belong to, then, no, that's not of God. That is of the devil. And so the opposite applies. No, you would not respect that. If Luciferians were in charge of me, I would not respect it because I would know at the end of the day, Lucifer's game is to destroy all humanity. So that person would be, and I would see him as a fool, an enemy of himself, 
and his children through ignorance, perhaps, but also an enemy of all humanity. All Luciferians are enemies of humanity, period. They skip over to the dark side because it's cool, only to find the more sensitive ones will commit suicide because, you know, the sense of artists and so forth, or get hooked on drugs because they can't take it. They can't take it. The bad ones live long time. They're, they're fine with it. A classic ex example of a guy that's just almost like a clown for their side would be Joe Biden. I love looking at politics and political figures as showing you the temple and the whole way it works. He doesn't bat an eye when kids get killed with drugs. None of them do. They're just fine with bloodletting. I mean, you know, you can, you can tell. Uh, yeah. I guess the downer part of this message is you're going to go through it and, you know, whatever this is, and it could change, meaning that my prayer, I believe, will be answered. And a respite may come. And things may not be uh, so black and white going forward. You know, um, if, I'm going to leave room for this, if Obama somehow transforms into an angel of light, if he becomes this man of perdition, this beast, which has several heads, so I guess it could be other possessed individuals as well, that would make more sense, and then not just one guy. But this person to fulfill this Revelation 13, Mark of the Beast and all that, um, still, he makes war with the saints. People say, well, those are the recent saints. Tribulation. People that just kind of during the tribulation after people were, well, according to the math of the pre-trib rapture people, your math ran out already and you're, you're still here. <laughs> Who think this is like mid-trib or we're in trib somewhere. And then the pre-wrath guys, you're, you're you know, you're... Uh, Three and a half years this, three and a half years that. It's quickly, all your math is going out the window. And you're going to have to admit that you're wrong in those numbers and giving people false hope that they're going to go to Disneyland when Disneyland is maybe not even in existence in the way you're presenting it. So, sorry, I'm the, I'm the bad guy. Talk to you when I talk to you. God bless you each and every one. I just, you know, yes, I feel like I'm fulfilling a kind of a priestly function in the, in the hall of the Lord in my <laughs> absence from religion and from religious institutions, you know, giving it to you as straight as I can. And I know that people that love truth will, will hear, hear truth here. People that want to, you know, just stop competing to be number one in this or number one in that and, you know, against each other and you're, who's got the prophet, who the, this whole prophecy thing, just forget about it. You have as much a gift of prophecy as anyone else. Just let the gifts flow where they will and stop trying to capitalize on them. You know, we're, in that sense, the remnant, we're all kind of in the same boat. Everyone has gifts. Everyone could have a radio show. Maybe I'll have one someday. With that, I bid you shalom.